In the tremendous universe where secrets proliferate and the actual texture of space-time is extended as far as possible, a significant secret has arisen. How we might interpret the development of the universe is at a junction with new proof-testing well-established hypotheses and alluding to stowed-away powers that could reshape the actual groundworks of cosmology. Go along with us on an excursion through the most recent revelations and profound dives into the mysteries of the universe as we investigate the entrancing and disputable inquiry. How fast is the universe truly growing? Something is off with how we might interpret the universe. Cosmology is by all accounts making a beeline for a showdown over perhaps its most central inquiry. How fast is the universe expanding? For over ten years, two sets of measures have been in struggle. Perceptions of the universe today generally show that the pace of expansion, known as the Hubble constant, is around 9% quicker than expectations based on data from the early universe. Specialists trust the James Webb Space Telescope, the most advanced telescope ever constructed, would assist with settling the inquiry unequivocally, yet up to this point no agreement has been arrived at. Rather, the Space Observatory has built up the disparity with amazingly exact groundbreaking perceptions that took steps to topple the standard model of cosmology. The new physics expected to reconsider or even supplant this 40-year-old hypothesis is now the subject of discussion. One fascinating and charming chance is that there is something we don't comprehend about the universe. Go along with us as we investigate the new, really profound pictures from James Webb that have recently affirmed that there is something genuinely amiss with how we might interpret the universe. Our universe began with a blast, the Big Bang. Energy, mass, and space appeared in a passing second. Then, the youthful universe formed, a gurgling, growing plasma of matter and antimatter. Particles that seemed to destroy each other on contact left to their own devices. The matter and antimatter inside this plasma ought to have drunk one another. Yet scientists believe that an obscure lopsidedness permitted more matter than antimatter to be made, consequently saving the plasma universe from immediate implosion. Gravity pressed pockets of plasma compacting and warming the material so that sound waves traveling at around half the speed of light, called bionic acoustic oscillations, undulated across their surfaces. In the meantime, the high energy density of the early universe and its complicated objects expanded spacetime, pulling a little piece of that matter out of the conflict. As the universe swelled like an inflatable, the standard story goes that common matter interacting with light combined around undetectable bunches of dark matter to shape the first worlds, connected together by a huge cosmic web. At first, as the objects in the universe expanded, its energy density and hence its pace of expansion diminished. However, around 5 billion years ago, the universe began to accelerate at a continually increasing rate. The reason was a new invisible and baffling element called dark energy. The simplest and most well-known explanation of dark energy is that a cosmological constant, an inflationary energy, is the same everywhere and always woven into the fabric of spacetime. Einstein named it lambda in his general theory of relativity. As our universe has expanded, its general matter density has diminished while the dark energy density has remained the same continually making dark energy the largest contributor to its overall expansion. Taken together, the energy densities of ordinary matter, dark matter, dark energy, and light energy set an upper limit on the pace of the universe's expansion. They are also key components in the cosmological lambda cold dark matter model, lambda CDM, which guides the universe's development and predicts its end, with matter ultimately expanding up to the point that it will experience a phase known as the big freeze. A number of the model's predictions have proven surprisingly accurate. However, this is where the problems begin. Despite much research, astronomers still don't know what dark matter or dark energy is. As Ofer Lahav, professor of cosmology at University College London who studies dark energy in galaxies, puts it, the vast majority agree that the current structure of the universe is 5% ordinary bionic matter, 25% cold dark matter, and 70% dark energy. The embarrassing truth is that we don't understand the latter two. A much greater threat to the Lambda CDM model has arisen. Depending on the method astrophysicists use, the universe appears to be expanding at different rates, a discrepancy known as the Hubble tension. Trials of the early universe show that it was expanding much faster than Lambda CDM anticipated. These methods have been checked and confirmed by numerous observations. As astrophysicist Adam Rees, Nobel laureate and head of the team that made James Webb's new measurements said, 
The only explanation I can understand right now for why they differ is that the model we have between them may be missing something. Measuring the expansion of the universe requires more than just radar. The primary method to measure this expansion looked at the so-called cosmic microwave background, CMB. A remnant of the first light known to mankind made just 380,000 years after the Big Bang. This remnant is visible all around the sky, and it was mapped by the European Space Agency's Planck satellite to find the Hubble constant with an error of under 1%. From 2009 to 2013, in the Planck image, the universe is completely homogeneous, but the hotter and colder regions where matter is more or less dense reveal spots where the bionic acoustic vibrations have caused it to cluster together. As the universe expanded outward, this sponge structure evolved into a cosmic web, an intricate network of filaments along the intersections of galaxies. By studying these waves with the Planck satellite, cosmologists have concluded the amounts of ordinary and dark matter as well as the value of the cosmological constant or dark energy. Incorporating these into the standard model gives a Hubble constant of around 67 kilometers per second per megaparsec. Let's focus on that number for a moment. If a galaxy is one megaparsec away from us, that means it is receding from us and we from it at a speed of 67 kilometers per second. At 20 megaparsecs, this rate of recession reaches 1,340 kilometers per second and continues to increase dramatically. If a galaxy is more than 4,175 megaparsecs away, it is receding from us faster than the speed of light. A second method for finding this expansion rate uses pulsating stars called Cepheid variables. Dying stars whose outer layers of helium expand and contract as they absorb and emit radiation, making them periodically blink like distant beacons. In 1912, astronomer Henrietta Swan Leavitt discovered that the brighter a Cepheid star, the slower it blinks, allowing astronomers to gauge a star's absolute brightness and thus estimate its distance. It was a landmark discovery that made Cepheid variables the ubiquitous standard candles for measuring the immense scale of the universe. By combining findings from observations of Cepheid variables, astronomers can build measurements of vast distances, with each step taking them further back in time. It is perhaps the most reliable method astronomers use today to measure distances and build a cosmic distance ladder. Astronomers first build the ladder by selecting nearby Cepheids and measuring their distances against light. Wendy Friedman, an astrophysicist at the University of Chicago, explained that subsequent steps use only Cepheid variables. Next, cosmologists looked at the distances of the stars and supernovae on each bar and compared the extent of the redshift of their light which shifts toward longer red wavelengths as the universe expands. This allowed for an accurate measurement of the Hubble constant. In 2019, recent teams used this method to target the Hubble Space Telescope at one of the Milky Way's nearest neighbors, the Large Magellanic Cloud. Their results were strikingly high, showing an expansion rate of 74 kilometers per second per megaparsec compared to Planck's measurement. However, Hubble lacked the accuracy required for the messy regions of space the team was studying causing some of the distant Cepheids to blend with nearby stars. Critics have argued that this stunning result might have come from a measurement error. So, when James Webb launched in December 2021, it was poised to either resolve this discrepancy or confirm it. At 6.5 meters wide, Webb's mirror is nearly three times larger than Hubble's, which is only 2.4 meters wide. Additionally, James Webb can detect objects nearly 10 times fainter than Hubble and is also far more sensitive in the infrared range, allowing it to observe across a broader spectrum of wavelengths. By comparing the Cepheid variables measured by James Webb and the Galaxy NGC 4258 with bright type 1 supernovae, another kind of standard candle since they all explode with the same absolute brightness, Reese and his colleagues produced an almost identical result, 73 kilometers per second per megaparsec. Other measurements, including one made by Friedman with the Hubble Space Telescope of the fast brightening of the red supergiant branch and another of light bent by gravity from massive galaxies, returned values of 69.6 and 66.6 .6 kilometers per second per megaparsec respectively. Another result using light bending also gave a value of 73 kilometers per second per megaparsec. Cosmologists were baffled by these results. Rongjen Kai, a cosmologist at the University of California, Merced, who worked on the Hubble constant translation, said, The temperature of the CMB is measured to 1% accuracy, and the distance scale of the Cepheids is well understood. The cosmic microwave background, CMB, a relic of the universe's infancy, 
offers a pivotal clue to understanding its early dynamics and current expansion. It represents the faint afterglow of the Big Bang, detected uniformly across the sky. This radiation, first observed in 1965 by Penseus and Wilson, presents as a remarkably uniform glow but with minuscule temperature fluctuations. These fluctuations, analyzed by precise instruments like the Planck satellite, provide essential insights into the composition, age, and geometry of the cosmos. From the CMB's analysis, cosmologists derive the Hubble constant, a measure crucial for determining the rate of the universe's expansion. While the Planck mission suggested a Hubble constant around 67 kilometers per second per megaparsec, discrepancies arise when comparing these findings with other observational methods, such as using type IA supernovae or the direct measurement of nearby galaxies. Type IA supernovae, in particular, serve as standard candles due to their consistent luminosity. By observing these exploding stars across different distances, astronomers can gauge cosmic distances and indirectly measure the expansion rate of the universe. However, recent observations, including those from the Hubble Space Telescope and the new James Webb Space Telescope, indicate slight variations in the Hubble constant estimates. Such variations, although small, are significant in shaping our understanding of fundamental cosmological parameters. Beyond supernovae, gravitational lensing provides another method to study cosmic distances and probe the nature of dark matter. This phenomenon occurs when the gravitational field of a massive object bends light from a background source, acting as a natural telescope. By measuring the degree of bending and distortion, astronomers can infer the mass distribution of galaxies and clusters, thereby refining our understanding of the universe's large-scale structure. Moreover, ongoing surveys like the Dark Energy Survey, DES, and the Large Synoptic Survey Telescope, LSST, aim to map the distribution of galaxies and dark matter across vast regions of the sky. These surveys utilize advanced imaging technologies and data analysis techniques to trace the cosmic web, a network of filaments that connect galaxies and clusters over billions of light years. By studying the distribution and clustering patterns of galaxies, astronomers can further constrain cosmological models and refine estimates of parameters such as dark energy density and the Hubble constant. The pursuit of precision in cosmology extends beyond observational astronomy to theoretical physics, where efforts are underway to develop new models that can accommodate and explain the observed discrepancies. Modified gravity theories, such as modified Newtonian dynamics, MOND, and emergent gravity, propose alternative explanations for cosmic acceleration without invoking dark energy. These theories challenge the standard Lambda-CDM model but have yet to garner conclusive observational support. In parallel, particle physics experiments seek to directly detect dark matter particles, hypothesize constituents that interact weakly with ordinary matter and electromagnetic radiation. Underground detectors, such as the Large Underground Xenon, LUX, Experiment and the Cryogenic Dark Matter Search, CDMS, aim to capture rare interactions between dark matter particles and atomic nuclei. Success in detecting dark matter would revolutionize our understanding of particle physics and cosmology, providing crucial insights into the composition and evolution of the universe. The interplay between observational astronomy, theoretical physics, and experimental particle physics underscores the interdisciplinary nature of cosmology. Collaborative efforts between scientists across different fields are essential for advancing our understanding of cosmic phenomena and addressing fundamental questions about the universe's origin, evolution, and ultimate fate. Cosmological simulations also play a pivotal role in testing theoretical models and interpreting observational data. High-performance supercomputers simulate the formation and evolution of galaxies, clusters, and large-scale structure in the universe based on initial conditions derived from observations. These simulations allow scientists to explore a range of cosmological scenarios and compare simulated universes with observational data, thereby refining our understanding of cosmic evolution and structure formation. Theoretical advances in cosmology also encompass efforts to reconcile quantum mechanics with general relativity, two pillars of modern physics that describe the behavior of particles on microscopic scales and the dynamics of spacetime on cosmic scales, respectively. The quest for a quantum theory of gravity, such as string theory or loop quantum gravity, aims to unify these fundamental theories 
and provide a comprehensive framework for understanding the universe from its earliest moments to its current state. At the forefront of observational cosmology are space missions and ground-based telescopes equipped with state-of-the-art instruments. The Hubble Space Telescope, despite nearing the end of its operational lifespan, continues to deliver groundbreaking discoveries about the universe's distant galaxies, stellar populations, and the cosmic web. Its successor, the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, promises to revolutionize our understanding of the early universe, star formation, and the atmospheres of exoplanets. Scheduled to launch in the 2020s, the JWST boasts a larger mirror and enhanced infrared capabilities compared to Hubble, enabling it to peer deeper into space and observe fainter, more distant objects. By studying the infrared signatures of galaxies and protostellar clouds, JWST will uncover new insights into the formation of stars and galaxies in the early universe, shedding light on the processes that shaped the cosmos billions of years ago. In addition to space-based observatories, ground-based facilities like the Atacama Large millimeter submillimeter Array, ALMA, and the Square Kilometer Array, SKA, are poised to expand our understanding of the universe's cold and radio-emitting regions. ALMA, located in the Chilean Andes, observes the universe at millimeter and submillimeter wavelengths, revealing the molecular composition of interstellar gas clouds and the formation of planetary systems. Meanwhile, the SKA, an international radio telescope project, will comprise thousands of dishes and antennas spread across continents to survey the sky with unprecedented sensitivity and resolution. By mapping the distribution of neutral hydrogen gas and tracing cosmic magnetic fields, SKA will explore the cosmic dawn, the epoch when the first stars and galaxies formed, and investigate the role of magnetic fields in shaping the evolution of cosmic structures. In conclusion, cosmology stands at a crossroads of discovery, driven by technological advancements, theoretical innovations, and collaborative efforts across disciplines. From probing the nature of dark matter and dark energy to unraveling the mysteries of cosmic acceleration and structure formation, scientists are poised to unveil new insights into the fundamental workings of the universe. As observational capabilities continue to evolve and theoretical frameworks undergo refinement, cosmology promises to remain a dynamic and transformative field of scientific inquiry offering profound revelations about our cosmic origins and the nature of the universe on the largest scales imaginable.